We begin in Haiti. A 72-hour state of emergency has been declared in Port-au-Prince and surrounds after armed gangs carried out two serious jailbreaks. The BBC has been told the vast majority of inmates held the capital's main prison have escaped. Some 4,000 men, gangs who now control much of Port-au-Prince, broke into the jail in the early hours of Sunday. At least 12 people have been killed in the unrest. This latest upsurge in violence began on Thursday when the country's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, travelled to Nairobi to discuss sending a Kenyan-led multinational security force to Haiti. For more, I spoke to Harold Isaac, who's a freelance journalist who's in Port-au-Prince. Now we are we have entered a state of emergency along with a curfew and this is the answer of the government to the latest developments in the last few hours uh, where the security situation has seriously degraded here in the capital Port-au-Prince. Just describe what it's like. Well, um, for the most part, everybody here are expecting to have a disrupted week as uh, over 4,000 inmates have uh, uh, fled the, the two um, detention centers here in Port-au-Prince and uh, creating a, a real security crisis, aggravating what was already a challenging uh, a time to be uh, in the city. Um, so it's really a lot of questions without, with very little answers at this point. Some inmates we heard chose not to leave the prisons. They actually felt safer to stay. Well, safer and also legal consideration and also protecting their, their lives um, um, because uh, many of the high profiles, uh, especially the Colombians or uh, uh, people that were involved in the assassination of the president, some of them decided to stay uh, in order not to get killed in crossfires between the police and gangs or to have their sentence aggravated uh, as a result of fleeing the, the, the prison. So there are many implications for those who have actually fled. Now, the prime minister is in Nairobi. His absence is partly what, you know, where they, those saw an opportunity to uh, seize control. What's likely to happen next and how soon will this multinational security aid come in? This is unclear at this point. Nobody has the details, at least publicly, as to when uh, to expect the troops. The prime minister himself should be on his way back as we speak, uh, but nobody knows for sure where he is at this moment. Uh, and as such is the uh, ad interim at interim prime minister, uh, Mr. Boisvert, who has taken uh, and signed the decision to have the state of emergency along with the curfew tonight. Meanwhile, in another turn of events, the opposition leader is calling for changes in the Electoral Office of Jamaica following its handling of the local government elections results this week. Mark Golding insists the people's confidence in the institution is dwindling, but that's not all. Find out why there's a looming lawsuit and by whom in our extended story on Sunday in our major news at 7. Here's Golding's take on the system he now describes as flawed. We have concerns on the, the, the length of time this is taken. We have concerns on the way they presented the data, which we don't think is a balanced and fair way to present it as well, and has led to this misrepresentation to the public that the JLP won the election, which is flawed and false. So we have some concerns, but they are a critical institution, and it is very, very important that they be above the fray, that the public as a whole has confidence in them. And we will continue to support that and support the institution, but they need to do some introspection. And there may need to be some changes, you know, based on, and I'm not in a position to say the specifics of what has led to these concerns, but, you know, there, it is something which the country as a whole, I think, is going to demand that there be some improvements there. Again, you can watch more of the interview during CVM News at 7 on Sunday and our YouTube channel, CVM TV News.